Today we're going to tackle some sink repair. So my kids were saying that the sink wasn't working properly. Trying to get them to describe what's going on is pretty tough and truthfully I would have a hard time describing it too. So we came and checked out the sink. If you're having common issues like reduced water flow, leaking around the collar or around the faucet handle, or even what you saw in the video at the beginning was like a water hammer effect. All of these are going to be kind of what we call a stem replacement, a cartridge replacement, and that's what we'll be doing today. So our first step doing a plumbing repair is to turn the water off so we don't have other issues. So there's two general options for you to do here. You can either shut the water off at the meter, which is usually at the curb, or there's sometimes there's a water shut off valve inside the house. The advantage to doing this is uh, it prevents any leaks at the individual shutoff valve, but the con to it is, is all the water's off inside the house. If you choose to do it that way, just make sure you tell everybody in the house you're turning the water off, and also you want to think about turning off your ice maker so that it doesn't try to make ice while you have your water shut off. The second option and the more practical approach is to turn it off at the individual water shutoff valve, which is going to be located underneath the sink here. This is the method we're going to try today. The disadvantage to this is there's a possibility that this valve could leak if it hasn't been used in a long time. So we need to double check that when we're done with our project. You're going to turn your valve all the way to the right to shut it off. A good thing to do when you're working on a sink project like this is to pull your sink stopper up and place a towel in the sink basin just in case we drop apart or something like that it didn't fall down the sink and make your day worse. Now that we have the water shut off we're going to turn our our sink valve on and just relieve any pressure if there happens to be any. The next thing that we're going to do is try to remove this handle. Different handles are going to be designed different ways but what we're going to do is actually unscrew this piece here so that it gets it out of our way. There's a little Allen screw here. We'll unscrew it and then attempt to take the handle off. If you find the handles difficult to come off, which often they can, try squirting a little WD-40 and letting it sit for a while and then slowly trying to work it off. Okay, so that was brutal to get off. I spent probably the better part of 30 minutes just rocking it back and forth with my hand. I found that the screwdriver really didn't help a ton. It also kind of marred my surface slightly. I'm not too worried about that, to be honest with you. Probably upon retrospect, a better method would have been to have squirted some WD-40 down in your hole. Let that just sit for 30 minutes and then come back. But I just patiently worked at just kind of rocking it back and forth. I found that actually reattaching the handle gave me more leverage and just working on it forever, we finally got it off and now we're ready for the next step. One thing that you have to consider in a project like this, this is aged plumbing. It's about 17 year old faucet. Hopefully we'll be able to get it repaired, but there's always the reality that something is just too old and, and stuck and you may not be able to get it off. If that's the, the case, you're just looking at a faucet replacement, but you're gonna try it and um, best of luck. Before you take a part out, make sure you take a picture of it so that you have an idea of the orientation. And the other thing is take the part with you to the store. You'd be surprised how many options there are and it's nice to have it while you're there. What we're gonna do is take the ring and loosen it up with a crescent wrench we're going to pop out our cartridge or stem. So there's a rubber washer down inside there that you have to remove and a spring. We just luckily got them both at the same time. I like to use a Q-tip so that we don't scratch or mar our surface in there at all. So basically at this point, we're going to just reverse the process that we took everything out with. This particular faucet, there's a spring and a rubber washer. 
you'll place those on a Q-tip and get those back down into the, the hole. Down in there. After you've completed that, you'll set your cartridge or stem back in. There's also a tab that's the stopper that tells the handle which way it needs to stop at, and you need to adjust that properly. There's only two options on this particular model, so try to mimic what you took out. Then lastly, we'll put the nut back on, put our handle on, and do some testing. We were having a problem getting it to go on correctly. The nut was starting to feel like it was off center or balance. We call it kind of cross threading. So I just took it all apart, started over again until I was able to get it set in the spot, in place, and then the nut starts to spin a lot smoother and it has a right, a correct feel to it. So once we've gotten to this point, you'll notice I didn't put the Allen screw back into the handle. What we want to do is turn the water back on, turn our valve, make sure it's turning correctly, that it's not leaking anywhere, that we don't need to make any other adjustments before we call this project done. Now that we know it works, turns on and off right at about the right angles, in fact, didn't see any leaks, and so I moved original handle, we'll set our final Allen screw back in, which keeps the handle nice and secure, and then we'll screw the last handle on. So the last thing, as we check to make sure everything's okay, you'll just kind of monitor your faucet over the first few uses to make sure that it's not leaking anywhere around the base, that everything's working okay. And the other thing you need to check a few times is the valve that you turned off underneath the sink. While that valve made this project a lot easier than turning the whole water off because it took a while to get everything done, that valve can leak when it hasn't been used for long periods of time. So you can check it, make sure it's not leaking. The most common places it's going to leak is on the, we'll call it the valve stem here. And if it is dripping a little bit, you have a new project or repair that you'll have to do. And you can just put a little Tupperware bowl or something underneath it until you can get to that project. Other than that, I'm glad to wash my hands of this one and we're done.